In this video lesson, I'd like to go through another pocket. Um, this is a multiple pocket, but not just more pockets on the same part. That would just be repeating the same process for multiple pockets. This is actually a nested pocket, where I have a pocket with inside a pocket. And that causes us some new challenges. So let's go ahead and get everything set up. Cam, tool isometric, setup. We'll move our work coordinate system to the top front left corner. And we're going to go ahead and shrink wrap it. So no additional stock. So what really adds more challenges to this one? Well, part of it has to do with this being a triangle. And the other part has to do with this being in two different levels. Um, so let's just look at it. Uh, I'm going to do the 2D adaptive. We'll go ahead and pick our tool 7. And I'm just going to pick that pocket. I'm not going to do anything else yet. I just want to show you what this looks like. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. And when I highlight it, hopefully what you can see is these actually go through the part. What I mean? Well, let's simulate it. So if I go to simulate that right now, you'll see that the tool actually walks right out the part. Um, and that's no good. So it's all about that boundary containment. And in reality, all it's doing is machining the triangle. And there's more material over here. So it's not really giving me the helix and everything that I want to try to do all that. So let's just scrap that. We are going to do a 2D adaptive. We're just going to do it differently. OK, so we're still going to do a 2D adaptive. We're still going to pick our tool 7. And when I come to here, instead of picking this pocket, this is a little bit counterintuitive. But what you're going to do is just define a boundary. We're going to define the entire boundary as a rectangle. So it's better shown up at the top. So I'm going to pick that instead. The yellow triangle is just going to help me define a height or the depth of the pocket. So this blue border right now is actually going to say stay inside of here. And then I'm going to clear everything out with this 2D adaptive down to here. So it's all going to be about this heights tab. Stock top, that's fine. It really should be model top. But it's about this bottom height. The selected contour is going to machine it up at the top. That's not what I want. I'm going to change the selected contour to selection. Now I can pick the triangle. So the triangle wasn't actually defining a boundary. The triangle was defining a height. I'll come into my passes tab, and then everything else is going to be the same. So we're going to go ahead and change this to 20% tool engagement. We're going to do the stock to leave for both the radial and the axial. We're going to come to our last tab. We'll put in our micro lift, 40 thousandths. And then I'm going to go ahead and change this to a 6 degree ramp angle. Everything else should be fine. OK, so what did we do? We picked our tool. We picked the boundary up at the top. And then that made us have to reassign the bottom height. And we wanted to reassign the top height anyways. We changed our optimal load, or the tool engagement, to 20%. Left the stock to leave. And I put in a micro lift, and we change the ramp angle. OK, well, let's see what that does. OK, so that should helix down into the part and clean everything out all the way down to there. Now, I'm just curious, what is the full height of the entire pocket? So I'm going to go to Inspect. I'm going to go to Measure, and I'm going to click on that line. So we're at a full 1 inch, which we could do with a half inch tool anyways. Um, so that's all fine. We could have gone all the way down to there, but rather than divide this out into two rectangle or two triangles, um, we're just going to go ahead and finish all of this one out and then go do the other one. Okay, so cam, 2D adaptive. Would it be nice if I could just duplicate that last operation instead of having to keep changing all those settings? Well, you can. I can just right click on an operation and duplicate. Sometimes you have to make a decision. Is it better to just start all over and do the settings, or is it better to start with the settings you've already got and make some changes? Well, let's see. So I want to release this pocket selection, and I want to pick this this time. And anything to do on here? Uh, selection, that's no good. I actually want that to be the contoured selection. So that'll pick what I pick down here. And then this isn't model top anymore. This is actually the yellow. At least I don't have anything to do here or here. So it did save me a little bit of time by trying to duplicate an operation. And we'll say OK. OK, so that should clean out everything to the yellow, not because of the yellow. And this should clean out all the blue. 
and it looks like that helix is starting at a good place. Awesome. Let's go ahead and simulate it. So click on Setup, Simulate, and Play. Okay, good. So we've cleaned everything out, roughed it out, and now we need to do our finishing. Unfortunately, that's going to be a little bit of a headache because um, this 2D pocket, it's going to be the same thing. I don't necessarily want to just pick this. If I do, I'm going to run into the same problem with it going outside the part. And I do have some things that I can kind of do in here, but hmm, how about we just do the exact same thing? So I'm going to pick that boundary. I'm going to go ahead and change this bottom height to selection. We'll go ahead and change that to model top just because. We'll go ahead and change our maximum step over to the 50%. This time we don't want stock to leave on the floor. So maximum step over 50%, no stock on the floor, and anything here. Um, we'll go ahead and put in a micro lift. And we'll go ahead and change that helix to 6 degrees. Now, there's a couple things that are wrong, but we'll go fix those here in a second. Okay, first of all, is that helix right? And hopefully you're saying no, that helix is starting up here when there's nothing for it to do. All it's doing is finishing, so I should just have a tiny little red spiral. Okay, well that was because of the heights tab, so we adjusted the bottom tab, but that should now be the exact same thing. Yeah, they should be measured both off of here, and it will do a small lift off of here because it has to do with the retract height and so on. Okay, so that does give us that small little red coil that goes in there, um, but that goes all the way out into here. There's nothing there. It's just cutting air. Well, this next part is just a preference. There's nothing to do here, so what if I gave it something to do? Um, I could. I could take that, and I could drag it and drop it. So now I'm going to rough that area out and then clean up the yellow. And then I'll do the exact same thing. I'll go ahead and rough that out and then clean up the blue. Okay, so this time am I going to duplicate it? Yeah, sure, why not? So I'll go ahead and duplicate it. I'm going to drag it out of there and underneath the adaptive. Yeah, let's go ahead and do some changing. Okay, so let's release that pocket. This time we can just pick the floor. Unfortunately, this remembers both of the selections from the last one, so I'm just going to let them go. This one is now going to be selected contours because it's right. That is what I wanted. And then this selection is, oh, it's just going to be that, that floor again. Everything else should be fine. I shouldn't have to mess with those tabs again. It was really all about reassigning the pocket selection and then making sure that it starts at the right place and ends at the right place. Okay, that was weird. All right, so everything looks good. It's a very small helix as it goes in, and then it cleans that up. So that should have everything but the walls. Okay, um, so 2D contour. 2D contour, and I can't pick that for the same problem. So i got to pick this again. Well, that's the best thing we've got right now. So I'll go ahead and pick that as my selection, and um, that really doesn't matter. It's all about this one. I don't want that. I want this. So I want the contour to go all the way down to there and go all the way around the wall. Okay. That, that sounds okay. Um, let's duplicate it. And what do we got to do? Well, first we know we've got to release the selection, and I want this one instead. This time I don't want that selection. I want it to be, and you could just do another selection or selected contours, either one. You could do a new selection, pick the bottom, or we could just select the contours. Either way. Okay, uh, everything, everything sounds good, everything looks good. Um, let's just walk back through it before we simulate one more time. So 2D Adaptive, we have a 20% tool engagement, we have a six degree helix that goes all the way down. It's leaving us 20 thousandths on the floor and all four walls. We're then gonna clean up that floor so we can see that it starts right up off of it, goes down to it, and cleans everything at that level. 
another 2D adapter that should clean everything on the blue. It starts at the yellow and then goes down. We then clean up that floor and it looks like it starts at the right height. We then clean everything up at that top level and then the bottom one. Uh, so fingers crossed, let's see what happens. So we'll go ahead and click on simulate and play. Okay, everything looks good. Let's go ahead and turn on our part comparison. Awesome, I couldn't be happy with that, uh, except if I got rid of these blue. And we know that with a smaller tool um, or another operation to go in there and remove just the blue. Um, but other than that, with the half inch tool, that's what we're looking for. We've got everything hogged out with the adaptive. We've got the 2D pockets cleaning up the floor. We've got the contours cleaning up the wall. So there's a multi-pocket that's a nested pocket. Thank <laughs> you.